Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day to start things off. The Bitcoin rich list or the number of addresses holding more than 1000 Bitcoin has grown in the past 12 months, possibly reflecting an influx of high net worth investors. The metric has registered growth of 30%. Since September of last year, according to Coinmetrics data, even with adjusted to exclude addresses known to belong to exchanges, the figure shows a similar surge at press time. 2,148 addresses contain more than 1,000 Bitcoin, amounting to 0.01% of all the Bitcoin addresses. Here's a little chart right here for those of you not looking at it. Uh, pretty much around the same exact time, it's, it's funny, as the prices were going up in 2017, the amount of addresses started going down. I assume that was based on a bit of a sell-off. And as the prices went down, the amount of addresses holding more than 1,000 Bitcoin also started going up. As seen in the fever line chart above, the list has witnessed a near 90-degree rise over the last 12 months. Investor and analyst Willy Wu believes the list has expanded mainly due to a de increased investor participation in the market. He said, the two options are, we have high net worth investors coming in or out. It would be cold exchange practice at the exchanges and custody solutions. The latter explanation cannot be ruled out, but it does not coincide with the other data we have on the timing or when of when supply increased at these entities. For now, I'm going with the first explanation. Here's the actual rich list for those of you who have never seen it before. It's on bitinfocharts.com. I'm pretty sure if you just Google uh, Bitcoin rich list, you can also find it. It's actually very fascinating to see the numbers. It has the total percentage of coins over here. And over here, it has the amount of, or like the balance of Bitcoin inside the actual wallets. There are two addresses on this planet that currently have more than 100,000 Bitcoin. There are 108 addresses that have anywhere from 10,000 to 100,000 Bitcoin. And even if you just account for anything above from one Bitcoin to a million air quotes, uh, it's just, it's, it's over 90% of all the Bitcoin that are floating around in the world. Uh, you can even, this is why I think the internet is fascinating. You can even see which address it went to, the current balance of it, uh, and the ins, number of ins, transactions going in, and number of transactions going out. There are, there are many uh, wallets where there are only transactions going in this address started in 2011 still active in 2019 and had has had 307 transactions flowing into it it has 79,000 bitcoin there are a lot of uh, uh mm, how do i say this so a lot of the speculation has been that it's probably not investors it, it, it has to just be something completely else uh the amount of news that we've had over the last couple of months about investors who are getting into the cryptocurrency space or even more realistically probably a lot of rich people who maybe only had 900 only 900 uh, i think they're all accumulating as fast as possible a lot of people i know are rapidly trying to get to one whole bitcoin if not other people, some uh, a sprinkle of people I've met over the course of a couple of years who are trying to uh, get to their full 10 Bitcoin. Everyone has a round number that they're trying to reach. Keeping in mind, there are probably only a few million Bitcoin actually floating around. It's definitely not 18 million anymore at this point. A lot of this is locked up, especially when you can see uh, which transactions have gone in and which ones have come out. Anyway, it's quite fascinating to see the, uh, the numbers... <laughs> sitting here of just how much Bitcoin uh, some of these people have. Ah, uh, yeah. I think it's fascinating because it also gives us a, another window into how much Bitcoin is not floating around and how much is being accumulated. I mean, it's fairly obvious that rich people are buying up right now. And I think to think otherwise is, is a little foolish in my eyes. Anyway, let's move on. Changpeng Cao... The CEO of Binance says a price of $16,000 per Bitcoin will happen soon-ish. In a tweet sent a couple of days ago, Cao explains that price predictions are easy, but getting the timing right is hard, he said. LOL. Price predictions are easy. It's just hard to be right about the timing. We will see 16,000 Bitcoin soon-ish. 
1.4 billion people on it, working on it as we speak. For those of you who don't know, what he was referring to is, uh, if, 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 if you're relatively new to crypto, I will give you a, a well-known secret. Um, a lot of people are really into price predictions. A lot of people are into anything that has to do with like price predictions from the future or people being correct about a price prediction. If that kind of makes any sense, I'll explain. One of the price predictions that we had at the beginning of this year uh, was someone, I don't think it was, on, okay, maybe it was on 4chan, but there was definitely, I saw a post like this on Reddit. And there was a person pretty much stating, uh, I think in the beginning of this year, exactly where the price would go, I think every two or every three months. And this person was correct the entire year, the entire year until we got to October. October was when Bitcoin's price was supposed to have been above 16,000. Or rather, this person wasn't even predicting. They said that they had a chart and it showed them exactly where the price was going to go. Uh, why they gained popularity is because they were correct every other month except for October. They also said that in the first quarter of next year, Bitcoin would hit 29000 56000 in quarter three, and $87,000 per Bitcoin by the end of next year. I guess this is what he was referring to. And also, even more sneakilier, uh, he also made sure to throw in that 1.4 billion people are working on it. For those of you who have no idea what that means, you should definitely understand by this point. Uh, China has become very friendly to blockchain. A lot of people are trying to make sure to differentiate the difference uh, between blockchain and Bitcoin as if we don't already know. However, uh, based on my findings, my hearings and my readings, when the president of China announced that he was friendly or was friendly on blockchain and that people should embrace it, there were apparently a large amount of buy ups through over the counter markets within China. And one can only assume elsewhere around the world as uh, people were realizing that China uh, had the go ahead to get into the cryptocurrency market. Anyway, um, I would not be shocked if we started going up higher relatively soon. Simply because I think people are downplaying or trying to downplay or thinking it's not as important that 1.4 billion people inside of a country that's controlled by just a handful of people has been once again told, uh, do this. Um, yeah. Anyway, let's move on. Next up, customers of the U.S. branch of Binance, known as Binance.us, can now purchase cryptocurrencies using their debit cards. In a blog post on the 1st of November, Binance US announced that the exchange will now offer its customers the possibility to purchase cryptocurrencies with a debit card, joining existing US dollar on and off ramps, including the automated clearinghouse ACH and bank wire. Binance US announced that in the first 30 days since launching the exchange dumped to 15 million in daily trading volume while increasing its token listing from 7 to 24 tokens bringing a total of 40 trading pairs to US users the exchange went live on yada 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 not super important the important part is uh, is that if you were trying to buy cryptocurrencies before with a debit card uh, and I don't mean this in a, in a mean way I've noticed a lot of people over the age of 25 for some reason don't know the difference between debit and credit uh, credit is debt Debit comes directly from your account. Like I said, not to say that in a mean way, I've mentioned to a couple of other people before uh, when they were trying to pay with something, I said, are you paying with debit or credit? And they looked at me with a confused look. So uh, it's happened too many times over the last couple of years. So I thought I'd just clarify that. Anyway, if you were looking to buy with money from your own bank account, you can now do so on Binance.us. Wonderful. Let's move on. Here's one of my favorite stories. France... The country is about to introduce an educational module to its high school curriculum that covers Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. In June, the French Ministry of National Education amended its study plan to incorporate the world's largest cryptocurrency. French educators are expected to teach an introductory course that will assist students in understanding the impact Bitcoin has on the French and global economies. The ministry, further, the ministry further provides teachers with three educational explainer videos that address questions such as, is Bitcoin the currency of the future? Can Bitcoin replace the euro? And do you have trust in your currency? 
My goodness. According to the ministry's outline, students will be required to compare Bitcoin with fiat currencies, which will eventually lead to basic knowledge about Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and their role in the traditional financial world. As it is only an introductory course to Bitcoin, students are not expected to leave the classroom as full-fledged crypto experts. However, teaching young students some of the ins and outs of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies will provide them with knowledge that grows increasingly relevant as the cryptocurrencies become more widespread. Stop. First, uh, golf clap. Like an actual golf clap for that entire country. Or even just this person who decided to uh, get this push through. Second, can you imagine your country, I'm pointing at you, wherever you live, can you imagine the Ministry of National Education in your country making this a requirement for students where you live to learn about cryptocurrencies? I know so many people growing up who had never learned anything about finance. They never learned to file their taxes. They never learned what, a, what the difference between a debit and a credit card was. They went to university completely in debt, had no idea what money was, how money was created. Teaching kids in high school, even if it's just three videos, is Bitcoin the currency of the future? Can Bitcoin replace the euro? Do you know how, how strong this sentence alone is? Even just opening up the minds of young people to even think that it could be a possibility that a cryptocurrency could replace fiat currency. It's incredible. Uh, I love every single part of it. Um, I assume this will not catch on like wildfire. Many countries around the world are terrified of anything cryptographically currency-like. Uh, they don't care for stable coins and they sure as heck do not care for Bitcoin. However, uh, this is great. Uh, France was also the first country, if I'm not mistaken, to have that thing where you could walk into a, a, a tobacco shop and also buy Bitcoin. I don't know what's going on there, but um, it's great. Anyway, uh, if you're a teacher, and I, I, I guess I kind of mean this seriously as well. If you're a teacher, if you know somebody who is a teacher, have you ever thought about teaching crypto in your class, having like an after school thing? Like I remember when, when I was younger in school, there were certain teachers who would have like a, if there was like a topic that we wanted to learn about, they would have like, they would take their time, an extra 30 minutes after the school day was over, and we would go to another classroom and they would just talk to 15, 16 students, like explaining stuff to us. We had a science teacher, not that I'm going off topic too much, it's more of like of an explanation. We had a teacher, it was relative, he was had been 60, 70 years old or something like that. He was our uh, science teacher, something earth science, blah, 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 blah. And I remember we used to have really weird questions about like earth formation and this and that, and it wasn't on the daily curriculum. And he would meet us in this classroom after class, and he would just explain to us all these other things that we had questions about. So I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of other students out there. Sorry, I'm talking too fast. I'm pretty sure there are a lot of other students out there who have tons of questions about cryptocurrencies, but they probably have nowhere to go. They probably just look at random articles on the internet, but really have no idea. Especially if you've been with this channel for a while, you have a fairly strong basic knowledge of the cryptocurrency space. Spread the knowledge. Spread the, spread the knowledgeable wealth. This is absolutely fantastic. I hope this goes to other countries. Can you imagine? I can't. I can't. I, I, I can't imagine the national curriculum of the U.S. having something like, is Bitcoin the currency of the future? Could Bitcoin replace the U.S. dollar? And do you have trust in your own currency? Because you're not supposed to ask these questions. These are, these are questions that are supposed to be, it's there. We believe in it. We have trust in it because someone else said, it's, 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 it's great. Anyway, let's move on. Next up, the United Kingdom's Tax Payments and Customs Authority, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs, HMRC, has updated its cryptocurrency taxation guidelines for businesses and individuals. On the 1st of November, the UK's government tax agency, which manages taxes al alongside other financial policies, released tax guidance updates that further clarify its stance on how businesses and individuals involved with cryptocurrency will be taxed. The guidelines set out the HMRC's view on cryptocurrency transactions, which taxes apply, how to file tax returns, and accounting practices, among others. It also considers the taxation of exchange tokens, while stating that the rules for utility or security tokens will be added in the future. Companies that buy or sell mine exchange tokens for other assets or provide goods or services in return for tokens are liable to pay for one or more different type of tax. Those taxes include income tax, corporate tax, capital gains tax, stamp taxes, 
and national insurance contributions. The most important part is here. The tax authority explicitly stated that it does not consider any of the current types of cryptocurrencies to be money or currency. Why is this important? Remember a couple of days ago, we were just talking about Germany. Germany did the exact same thing. Come, uh, yeah, kind of. Countries around the world right now are now coming forward, finally, except for the big one who we're all waiting for, have started coming forward and telling their citizens exactly what taxes they will have to pay, what category this falls under, exactly how this is going to work, what this does within the country, if you can use it, yes or no. Uh, while it may not always be 100% favorable to the cryptocurrency space, the, the silver lining is that these, are, these countries are not banning cryptocurrencies. They're simply giving horrible regulations. The point being, except for Portugal, thumbs up Portugal for zero taxes. My goodness. Uh, the point being is that we're starting to see the uh, secondary thing popping up where governments are announcing that cryptocurrencies to them are not money and they are not currency even though they transact value that they don't exhibit the current things of a traditional currency as they're not a store of value as there's not a store of wealth as you know so yada 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 um i'm glad because it also puts cryptocurrencies on the back burner for them anytime that they don't attack us or announce that like the other day as well uh that we are either not money we are not currency or that we are currently not a threat to any type of financial system this only allows the network and the people network to grow stronger and the amount of people around the world who are getting into bitcoin to increase in numbers so the point to be made is that within europe currently a number of countries have given uh, rules and regulations and mandates as to exactly what to do with cryptocurrencies. I think there's also something else floating around. It was the um, Financial Action Task Force that has already come into effect, but there was something else that just got passed as well. I think it was in Finland. It had to do with a money transmitting law. I can't remember exactly what it is, but it also involves cryptocurrencies as well. Anyway, uh, that's the UK money crypto news for today. Next up, Singapore crypto exchange Huobi is set to freeze accounts controlled by U.S. residents in an effort to crack down on those individuals violating the user agreement, according to a post on their website. This announcement comes after a gradual depreciation of U.S. accounts, U.S. resident accounts over the past 13 months, over the past few months, my goodness, read the 13th here, over the past few months, and will end with a total freeze of all U.S. accounts on the 13th of November Exchanges have long had issues operating within the United States. Many countries in Europe and Asia have provided concrete legislation. There we go. Outlining how to operate a business in the cryptocurrency space. Why can't this just happen everywhere? Why, why, why are countries so annoying? I couldn't find a word in my head. I went through all the files and annoying was the only word I, I could find. Why is it so difficult for even just the U.S.? Just give regulation. What's the, what's the problem? Just tell people what they can and can't do. You can, you can all worry about the tax stuff later. Anyway, where's the rest of it? However, the U.S. has heavily lagged behind on that front. There is no real framework when it comes down to tax payments, running your business, not even the slight assurance by the governments to pass laws regarding the same. Huobi has been long one of the larg longest crypto exchanges in Asia. At the points, they had the highest trading volume. The other, blah, 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 blah. Apparently, yeah, Huobi has always had language in their terms of service banning U.S. users. But there were many cases where U.S. users were able to make accounts and perform trades on the platform. However, however, Huobi isn't just running away from with their American clients' money. They said, you, you know, you have a couple days. Uh, the point being, if you have a Huobi account, take your money off of it. Take your crypto off of it. <clears throat> you probably shouldn't have had it in the first place. The reason why I decided to mention it is that I've noticed before, uh, in my head, I thought a number of people were just using some of the largest crypto exchanges in the planet three off the top of my head uh, but a lot of other people have been using other exchanges uh, to maybe get a more favorable price maybe it's been easier for them maybe they didn't want to have their cryptocurrencies all in one exchange uh, if you don't want it all in one exchange you should definitely be learning how to custody your own cryptocurrency i have a feeling we're going to have a situation within the next three years i can feel it uh, where people are going to try and take their money off of a cryptocurrency exchange and it's not going to be possible because that exchange will have been locked by some type of government uh, trying to crack down on usage of cryptocurrencies. 
and then your money will be gone, and then we'll have another Mt. Gox 2.0, and then the market will suffer, and it's more so because people didn't realize that they could also have their own cryptocurrencies on a nano ledger, on their own computer, or even offline. Uh, anyway, yeah, if you have a Huobi account, uh, and you are a U.S. resident, or live in the U.S., or have a U.S. something passport, blah, 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 please note that within the next seven days, uh, that's all you got. They will take your money afterwards, I assume. Oh, oh, sorry. They'll freeze your account. And I assume that freeze uh, won't be good. To kind of finish things off, the United States national debt is now over 23 trillion U.S. dollars. It is also worth noting that the debt per U.S. citizen is just about $70,000 that is on your shoulders. And that debt to gross domestic product ratio is 106%. The milestone has been pointed out on the 1st of November by Bitcoin advocate Twitter personality Rhythm, who has also said that every U.S. dollar on the U.S. national debt is, in fact, a reason to buy Bitcoin. Another use presented, another interesting take added, that's more than $1 million debt per one Bitcoin. A podcast I was listening to, it wasn't Laura Shin, I can't remember. I I I I have a, a list of like podcasts that kind of autoplay as I'm walking through the streets. And there was a guy who was noting a couple of days ago. I think it was about Bitcoin as a I think it was called Bitcoin as a base currency. I think that was the, the title of that podcast. He was explaining a couple of days ago that Bitcoin uh, rather that the US national debt was uh, 22 trillion and how it it just can't go on any further. Um because this debt is never going to be paid back. Other countries are constantly even more in debt with other countries, and they continue just printing money to try and pay down some of the debt, but they usually end up just, say, they print the money to say that they're going to pay down the debt, but then they end up just buying something else. He was explaining how money was made, and it was very fascinating. He said, if you're a bank, uh, especially a larger bank or a central bank, you have uh, the right, as it were, air quotes, to be able to print money at will. And he said most people would assume that when a central bank is printing money, that they're printing it in order to pay off debt, to do something good, to pay for infrastructure, to pay for so-and-so. And he said what they usually end up doing is they're always calculating and looking around uh, for the best deals for them. So at any given point, they may print $14 billion, $15 billion, and you would assume they're going to do something for the, not the greater good, but for the good of the country to pay down some of the debt. Nope. They end up buying property in China or they end up buying uh, bonds from this market or they end up buying something else um, as a way to have other things in their, not portfolio. I can't remember the, the, the other word for it. Uh, it. It's pretty much a way to make themselves richer should there be a collapse or when there is a collapse of uh, the global financial markets that they are still cushioned in some sort of other way so that they're just not completely reliant on that money that they've been printing, especially as it gets devalued. What a fascinating time to be alive. And I, and I mean it. It's just we are living through incredibly crazy times. I'm just... Um, it's interesting that I'm here for the ride. That's one way of kind of saying it. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. AFMC staff. Ting Tang Walla Walla Bing Bang. Sammy Bu Uch, how do you get this right? Bu Uch Cha. Sammy Bu Ucha. Sammy Bu Ucha. I'm going to write that down. Sammy Bu Ucha. Bodie McBoatface. Yes to crypto. Miller Hitch Test Every Day and Kyle Skip's Leg Day. Minting Coins. Jeremy Fox. Jim Gardner. Anthony Charles. Nick Mangialavori. Paxis. Crypto Beer Shipmate. Vlad the Impaler. Richie Rich the Third. Nick Kanaya. Setsuna. Damien. Nicholas Werner with One Piece One Love, Cryptopolis Crypto Artist, Cold E3D, Strange Radio Central Mechanic, Miluizi Adobo, Bankroll Network, Crypto Joe, 242 to the World, Wise Night Owl, Jared Schneider, Triple M and J, Woody and Daisy, Brady Niels, Master Ventures in Thailand, Mohair Maroney, Adam Grasick, Todd Mullis, and Professor Wally from Gun Bot University. Thank you all very, very much <clears throat> for your support. At the moment, something weird is happening. Bitcoin is going up. I think it had it even over here. Nope. Gone. Deleted. Forever. Is it going to come back? Yes, it did. Uh, Bitcoin's price was recently just above $9,400.
on multiple different exchanges, multiple different places. It looks like Bitcoin's price is trying to make that move above 9,500. Obviously, you're going to have people who are trying to push the price down. Uh, the important part is, is that Bitcoin itself is trying to move back up. Other coins were also following this momentum as well. A lot of the other coins were trying to at least uh, push themselves back up, uh, usually around the 3% range, somewhere around there. Uh, Cardano's up by almost 4%. Tron is up by almost 3%, give or take. You can see that they're also trying to move up as well. Uh, we will see what ends up happening as the day ends up going along further. Yeah, Amise goes up, VeChain is up, Quantum. Yeah, they're all trying to move up. It's always reliant on Bitcoin. Oh gosh, do you remember the, remember 2016, 2017, when we were all, all of us, everyone, don't pretend like it wasn't you as well. Everyone kept on saying that by 2019, yeah, I can't wait till the cryptocurrency prices are, are decoupled from Bitcoin. That's going to be a great day. My goodness, can't wait to see that. Um, look how that turned out. Bitcoin is still the king. Bitcoin rules the market. If Bitcoin goes down, we all go down. Uh, the point being, uh, I don't think there was a point to that. I think the main idea or the, or the takeaway was that years ago, we for some reason thought that uh, there would no longer be a correlation between other cryptocurrencies prices and Bitcoin. And we're sliding quickly into 2020. And I don't, I don't see this, 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 this correlation being broken anytime soon. I think, it's, I think if anything, I think it's going to be even more tense as time goes on. If Bitcoin ends up getting over, let's say the magical fifteen, sixteen thousand $16,000 once again, altcoins are going to start to skyrocket. If Bitcoin dips down a little bit, the, the altcoins are going to be very fearful and they're also going to drip, drip down. I guess also drip down. Anyway, I'm blabbing on. I hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all, every single one of you once again for watching and or listening. And yeah, I will definitely be talking to you all soon. See you.